Good morning to you. Mark Sadoth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Friday, the 23rd of June, 2017. Let's see what's happening out there before we head into the weekend. Here we see the remnants of Cindy over Arkansas today. That will continue to move on off to the northeast. And it's just a weak low pressure area, really not much left to it, um, what we call a remnant circulation. And we'll take a look at more about what it's going to do in terms of impacts in just a moment. In the meantime, here in the Pacific, off the coast of Mexico, 50% chance of development with our system uh, that has sprung up over the last couple of days while I have been on the road. 70% chance of development over the next five days. And let's mute the old iPhone so it doesn't continue to interrupt me. And uh, if we look down here at the satellite picture and map combined, you see it's a pretty well-organized disturbance and um, probably going to go on to become a tropical depression. And if we look at the statistics on it, they do mention that environmental conditions appear conducive for development. And it looks like it will move slowly to the west-northwest, parallel to the coast of Mexico. So as it moves this way, remember, and I'm going to show you this in a moment, abnormally cold sea surface temperatures are lurking in this area. So once again, unless it rapidly gets its act together, this may fail to do more than just become a tropical storm. We'll have to see. All right, looking at the satellite picture, the remnants of Cindy again right here over Arkansas. Lots of cloud cover over a good deal of the southeast, but most of the heavy rain has come to an end, and hopefully the severe weather will be less widespread today than it was yesterday. And uh, we're going to talk on Monday about some of the things that we have learned collectively that we should have learned about Cindy and some of the data and information that I collected with my colleague Carrie as we were on the Gulf Coast. Um, and then if we look at the Weather Service watch warning map, a pretty large area, lots and lots of counties throughout the eastern third of the country, you know, not quite to the coast yet, of course, but in the eastern third of the country, we do have a pretty good flood risk across a wide area as that tropical rainfall moves along. And then you notice um, the ring of fire basically all through here has nothing to do with the tropics, but it's getting hot. And um, we're going to probably flip the pattern here to where things just won't be too favorable for development. You don't have development all the time. Even in 2005, when we, it was so busy with 28 named storms, we had you know two or three weeks at a time where there was no development. Not saying this will be exactly like 2005, but you will have these lulls even in a busy year. I wanted to show you this map because it kind of pinpoints a couple of things that are of note. We have this frontal system that is draped across the United States here coming out of Canada, and that is a convergent zone or a boundary, and that's going to butt up against all this moisture here being brought in from Cindy. And you can see in the dark green area, you have some pretty heavy rainfall, likely. And the lighter green areas, eh, there's just a chance of rain. Uh, so, you know, look at this and say, all right, uh, you know, if I have travel plans, the green, the dark green area could be where the heaviest rain is. And, um, and then in the red areas, the sort of dark crimson color here and here, uh, not related to Cindy really, you have some thunderstorm chances overall. But this gives you an idea that that front, this cold front here, really squeezing out that moisture as the leftovers of Cindy moves on through. Looking at the latest sea surface temperature anomalies this updated yesterday, I want to point out a couple of things. We'll go over this in more detail on Monday. Very warm still in the MDR, the main development region. Um, we're not seeing any cracks in that yet. And so that shows us that the trade winds are not screaming across this area, mixing all this up. And it's also, again, very warm off the Iberian Peninsula. And you can see colder than average sea surface temperatures up here in the North Atlantic. And it's probably setting up for a very, very busy, uh, especially August and September. Now, remember, our disturbance that we're tracking is sitting right down here in the Pacific. And water temperatures are just right at or below the long-term average. But as it moves off to the west-northwest, it's going to move into water temperatures that are a degree or more Celsius below normal. And this is unusual. We're getting into the time period where we're going to start to lag 
with regards to hurricane development in the Pacific. So they're certainly going to keep track of it, and I'm not minimalizing it, but when you see this uh, anomaly here compared to where we should be this time of year, and you get tropical development, it should inhibit that. And you notice, too, for the most part, really no signs of El Nino out here, warm, neutral conditions, but nothing that looks like it will impede the Atlantic hurricane season. Looking at a wide shot of the Atlantic Basin this morning, you can see yeah, there's a tropical wave out here, but dry air and just a different pattern than we saw that uh, led to the formation of Brett is in place and uh, fairly stable conditions. And this is really expected for June and July. Brett was very unusual coming in at a low latitude down here, passing over Trinidad, and then it really fizzled out quickly as conditions were not very favorable. Usually the trade winds scream through the Caribbean much, much faster this time of year. Then they start to slow later on as the patterns change in August and September. For our friends down here in the Eastern Caribbean, the Windward and Leeward Islands, if you're going to Barbados, if you're going to Trinidad, Tobago, Grenada, Guadeloupe, St. Lucia, you name it, the U.S. British Virgin Islands, no worries, even this tropical wave way out here to your east, once it passes through, would bring just a brief period of some showers and thunderstorms, and we'll watch this. It's still a few days away, and we can see if it amplifies any. But for the time being, uh, our friends down here in the islands, you are good to go. Very nice. Enjoy the easterly trades um, and very little tropical activity. In fact, pretty much a zero to worry about. In fact, if we go and look farther to the east, off the coast of Africa, pretty high amplitude tropical wave coming off, meaning you know, it's a little bit more vigorous, larger system. But you can even see without me pulling up the Saharan air layer chart, pretty good area of dry air embedded with it. You're going to get these Saharan air outbursts coming off from time to time, even in an active season, and uh, that typically starts to relent in August. You know, a lot of things start happening in August, but still, over Africa itself, a few more impulses to watch over the coming weeks, but none of them show too much signs of promise for development. So that's certainly good news there, especially for the Eastern Caribbean, because you face these items as they come your way first. <clears throat> All right, well, that is it for me for today. And I'll probably have an update tomorrow and then take Sunday off to just recuperate unless the system in the Pacific becomes a direct threat to land. Uh, otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, great uh, work on the Mississippi coast. I appreciate all the people that tuned in to the live streams. We did some work with YouTube, uh, using YouTube Live, and you know that interaction was just incredible. So I really appreciate that. It means a lot to all of us, uh, not only, you know, certainly me, sort of the front man of this, but everybody behind the scenes who supports what I do. It really means a lot to everybody. Have a great rest of your Friday. As always, I appreciate you tuning in to this. I am Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow afternoon.